Kaizo today. Welcome to my channel guys, my name is James. Today I'm going to show you how you can make a risotto with just a few things left in the fridge. I have a little bit of butternut squash, a bit of cheese, a bit of wine, and a bit of butter. And that's basically all you need to make a nice risotto. Now there are a few methods that we use professionally in the kitchen to make risotto. There's one, the traditional method. And then there's another method that I learned when I was cooking in London under Jason Atherton and Phil Carmichael. And if you don't know who they are, they're, they used to work for Gordon Ramsay, so basically this is Ramsay's way of making risotto. So I'm going to show you how to make it today, and before we get going, be sure to like the video down below, subscribe to the channel, and let's get started. So, like I said, I have a half butternut squash left in the fridge. First you want to take the seeds out, and if you're stuck in the same predicament with a bit of skin left on it, if you're going to use the knife, what you can do is cut it in half, sideways, again, then put it on the flat side or the larger side and then slowly go down and cut the skin off as you rotate. You have to be careful because this can take off a lot of meat and if you don't want to do this method you can use a peeler. It's going to be slower and you have to be careful with your fingers but it takes less meat off. So once you have it cleaned and peeled then you're just going to cut it into smaller pieces and you're going to break it down because it's going to cook much faster the smaller it is because we want this into a puree. More or less the same size. After you have it cut, we're gonna put it in a saute pan, everything in. Add a little bit of stock just so it doesn't burn. And we're going to put a little bit of aluminum on it because it's going to keep the heat in but allow a bit of a gap so it will allow the water to evaporate because we don't want this soggy. We don't want a wet puree. So while we're waiting for the puree to cook, we're going to cut and peel some shallots. So after you peel them, we're just going to cut them into bernoise. Just like so, and cut again. Very simple and easy. Now real quick, we're going to check it to see if it's done. Take off the aluminum, you can take a knife, and you find the biggest piece that you can find, and you poke it. If it goes through clean, it's done. Another trick is to take a knife or whatever and just smash it or break it, and if it does easily, it's finished. Another thing is that when this is cooking, if you need to add just a little more stock of water, and it's if you when you check it, if it's not done, add a little more. It's not going to hurt it. Now we're going to add it to the blender. One important note, the puree has to be hot. The pumpkin has to be hot. I'm going to add just a little bit of butter to it to help emulsify it. I'm going to put the lid on, and we're going to blend. And if it's a little thick, add a little bit of stock or water to it to help it. You want it more or less this consistency. All right, so now we have the shallots cut. We have a little bit of cheese, like I said, not that much. We have a bit of arborio rice measured out. We have the puree and a bit of white wine. And I also forgot to mention we have stock. So either one, you want to make the stock yourself, vegetable or chicken, or you buy it, whatever works. Right, now to start the risotto, one quick tip. Whenever you're making a risotto, you always want to use either a plastic or a wood spoon. You never use metal. The reason why is because it's going to break the grains of rice. And this is a big no-no, especially if you want to cook professionally. This is something you should know before you start cooking so you don't get yelled at when you're in the kitchen. All right, so first, a bit of oil in the pan. Add the shallots. All right, now we're going to cook the shallots for just a few minutes just until they turn clear. You do not want any color on them. This is very, very important when making a risotto. No color on the shallots or the onions. Okay, after about a minute or so, we're going to add the rice in. After about another minute, minute and a half, we're gonna add some wine. Ah, smells good. Now, we're going to let the wine cook off, and then we're going to gradually add the stock. 
As you can tell after now another minute or two, the wine has started to reduce, it's the alcohol is cooked off. We're going to gradually add the stock. It's very important that you want the stock hot because you want to always add hot stock to a hot dish, otherwise it's going to drop the temperature. We're just going to add little by little. Now while the risotto is cooking, you want to continuously move it. Occasionally check it, move it again. In the beginning it's not as important. When it starts to thicken and at the end it becomes much more important that you move it continuously. And you'll start to develop a coating over the rice. It'll start to absorb the stock, absorb all the fat. And when it's made properly, risotto is actually a pretty nice dish to eat when it's made correctly. Now after several minutes of cooking with stock I'm going to add a little bit of the puree that we added. I'm just going to add two tablespoons. I'm gonna mix this in. In total the risotto should take about uh, about 20 minutes from start to finish. In some kitchens, or actually in the professional kitchens, what we do when we're making the risottos is that we par cook the rice beforehand and then it only takes us about three to five minutes to finish a risotto. So it's very quick. So you get the risotto much faster than waiting like 20 plus minutes for it. All right, now we've been cooking for about 13 minutes. I've been continuously moving it and adjusting the heat as you need. All right, you can taste it and you can actually see that the rice, this little white piece of the rice, is not done yet. We're close, but not done yet. So, as you're cooking, continually taste it, and if need be, add a little bit of salt. Just a little bit. Until now, we haven't added any salt to any of it. Because now is the point that you add the salt when you're making the risotto because you can control everything at this point. And again, you want to add a little more stock, continuously. Now, I haven't added any butter yet. We're almost done, almost. As you can tell, the rice is starting to look like it's almost done. It's still a little too al dente. The rice is still a little too hard. And it's very important, you have to continuously move this because if you don't, it's gonna stick and burn. And if you saw my video with the paella as I was continually moving it, well this is the reason. Because I'm used to cooking thousands of risottos. Literally, thousands of all types. I'm gonna add a little butter to it. And as you can tell, it's becoming creamier. It's starting to thicken because of the fat. The rice is al dente, or just underdone. So you can actually see that there's a little bit of a white core to the rice. A little, not too much. And now it's the time to add the cheese. Mix it in. And we're finished. It's a very, very easy dish to make at home. You do need a bit of practice to make it, or to perfect it, but after a few tries, it's very easy. And that's the end of it guys. That's one easy way that you can make a risotto like this. It's not the traditional way, but it is an easy way step by step if you want to do it at home. And also be sure to save the elements like some of the pumpkin seeds if you want to, to use them for garnish. Or if you have any other Parmesan cheese, you can lay it on top. It's very easy. You just have to use your imagination. But anyway guys, be sure to like the video down below, and above all, be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done already. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys again soon.